Cheers, Ollie. Oh, it's a privilege to come here to the Stadium of Light, and it is an electric atmosphere, as it always is when we come to this fantastic stadium. Sunderland, after a difficult start, have picked up four points in their last two. Can they continue that little unbeaten run? Or will Southampton possibly be top of the championship come three o'clock this afternoon? So much to play for so early in the season. Tony Mowbray names an unchanged 11 from the side that drew at Coventry last week. Patterson, the keeper, Hume O'Neill, Ballard and Sirkin at the back. Neil and Equa in midfield with Barr, Dak and Clark just behind Joe Bellingham who starts up top. No Jack Stevens today for Southampton. Alcaraz, Charles uh, and Ami are dropped to the bench as uh, Mason Holgate comes in for his first start. Flint Downs, Will Smallbone and Sekumara also into the Saints lineup. Bazuma is in goal then. Walker Peters, Bednarek, Holgate and Manning at the back. It's down Smallbone and Armstrong in the middle with Mara, Adam Armstrong and Edoze up top on the bench. Very strong looking Southampton bench. Uh, Aribo, Shea Adams is there. Taylor Howard, Bellis, Alcaraz, Charles Fraser, Ameo and Bree join Alex McCarthy. A little bit less experienced on the Sunderland side of things. And Mickey Gray, that might be where this game tells. I've watched less than the last couple of uh, games they've had and it's been noticeable. The firepower they can bring off the bench is so often this level of difference. No, absolutely right, Mark. Uh, I think, you know, you talk about the squad that Southampton have, have put together for this uh, this challenge of the championship and, and just look, if it, if it does come down to those final 10, 15 minutes of the game, then you just have to have a look at your bench and the quality that they've got there. Jay Adams, they've just got quality there. Ryan Fraser with a lot of Premier League experience as well. So they've got quality there. They've got that firepower that can score goals in every single game that they play against. And it's going to be difficult for Sunderland. Inexperienced bench, of course, a very young starting 11 as well. But I think everybody's on the same page. They still look at the crowds that they're getting in this beautiful stadium. And they're behind the team, and I think that's all that matters. Yeah, we are about to get underway. The red and white stripes of Sunderland with the black shorts and red socks. It's the all black, black chain strip of Southampton. They're defending away to our right-hand side. Gavin Bazuno in his blue goalkeeping strip. Anthony Patterson away to the left in the yellow. And we are underway here. Another huge day of sporting action across the Talksport network. And we're live in the championship. Talksport 2, your home of the AFL. And it's Sunderland against Southampton. And Southampton have nicked it high up the field. Adam Armstrong is cutting in. Edge of the area. 25 yards out. Turns onto his right foot. He's going to have a shot. It takes a deflection. And it goes wide. Well, Sunderland think they're going to be allowed to play out from the back today. They need to think again. Corner kick Southampton. Well, straight away, you can see that high press from Southampton. Winning the ball up high. Sirkin getting caught on it. Quick corner here as well. Yeah, going to be whipped in. Again, it's blocked. Loops up in the air. Bouncing around edge of the air and it's hoofed away by Sunderland and the break could be on here. Over on that far side, they're trying to break out Sunderland. And belly, and they cut infield here, it's Abdullah Bar who does well to get it out wide to Hume on this right hand side. So Sunderland who are defending now, putting a great ball to the far post, free header! And Sunderland lead! Inside a minute, Jack Clark it is, who gets the goal! Wow, counter-attack, Abdullah Bar got it wide on the right-hand side, you put in a delicious ball to the far post, and Jack Clark arriving on marks, heads past Gavin Bazunu. what a start here for Sunderland, they lead by a goal to nil. Uh, what a start to the game, end-to-end -end in the first minute, chance from Adam Armstrong, what a fantastic break from Bar down the left-hand side. And when he plays it over to this right side with Trey Hume, he puts an incredible ball into the box. And then you just see Jack Clark sneaking in behind Kyle Walker-Peters. He just switches off. He thinks the ball's just going to go out to safety. But Jack Clark stays on his toes. He has to be patient because the ball's bouncing in front of him. But to keep your eye on it and head that down into the ground, pass Bazuna, super finish early on in the game. Fantastic start from the home side. What a counter-attacking goal. I know when you were talking to Ollie earlier on and you mentioned that Sunderland liked to have a lot of the ball. I was interested in reading Tony Mowbray's pre-match notes. He said, look, this might be one of the few times this season where we don't have a lot of the ball. We've got to be prepared to break and break fast. And that was a lethal, lethal counter-attack. Shots on goal at either end, Mickey Gray, but what a start for Tony Mowbray's well, side. That's fantastic. I mean, that's now, I mean, we talk in the build-up to the game, Mark. Didn't we? That's 17 games now without a clean sheet for Southampton and I think they were a little bit shell-shocked because nobody expected that but brilliant start from the home side and what that does it gets the home supporters onside straight away in this game yeah well, we said earlier on we expected there to be goals we've had one inside the opening minute there's a free kick conceded by Sunderland a foul on Carl Walker-Peters it's taken quickly Smallbone will have it 
and Southampton well they're used to conceding goals and they've conceded again here Mason Holgate has the ball he gets it back to Bednarek and Southampton now are starting to dominate possession but they've had an early warning that if they lose the ball high up the field Sunderland can break and break quickly 1-0 if you just switched on you miss Jack Clark nodding Sunderland in front ball with Walker Peters on the right hand side Close down but turns away from his man he's still going 25 yards out gets it wide on the Southampton right can they fashion an instant response here they've got the ball wide on the right down by the corner flag cross didn't come in initially works its way back here and they've retained possession Southampton and it's patient stuff from them as Holgate has it every Sunderland player back in the final third you can see the the shape there down below as we're high in the stand here at the stadium alike and now a run from Stuart Armstrong down the left tries to work a crossing should be cut out by O'Neill didn't quite get all of it but it's hooked away by Ballard and up towards the halfway line there's appeals for a free kick and Sunderland had a player go down but referee happy to get it on I think we're going to see a lot of this Mickey now yeah. Sun uh, Southampton dominating possession where well, they are I mean every outfield player from Southampton are in Sunderland's half and you can see how wide the two players are you can see Mara and Adozi they keep them wide but Sunderland are just waiting for their opportunity just won the ball back again they've been patient they're doing everything right early stages yes but they're doing everything right so far in the game Jack Clark's goal has Sunderland in front don't forget over on Talk Sport right now huge game in the Premier League as Patterson's clearance is blocked here and it'll fall to Downs Downs gets it away on the right hand side but the pass forward from Walker Peters was cut out by Sunderland and then defended that pretty well and they earned themselves a free kick midway sorry throwing midway inside their own half well, the only concern that you have Mark in the early stages if you're in a Sunderland shirt is how sloppy they've been at the back Sirkin giving the ball away Anthony Patterson trying to play out from the back Look, I think sometimes you can overplay yes of course all Sunderland players are back in their own half so it's difficult for Anthony Patterson just to clear his lines but I think you've got to be so sure if that ball's at your feet you've got to try and pick somebody out in a Sunderland shirt because if you don't we know what quality Southampton have got yeah. the goal coming inside 56 seconds what a start for Sunderland and that's after they'd had to defend the corner there's a strong challenge goes in down below us here and the referee might want a word there with Manning who well, he clattered into bar there you were a left back of some repute Mickey Gray you'd have been pretty happy with that one wouldn't you well I'm really surprised to be here absolutely I'm surprised Mark that we haven't seen an early yellow card look let's not forget let's hope that everybody is listening on TalkSport too but this game's on TV they know that the camera's on the referee and we've been told if you can see silly fouls that the yellow card is going to come out of the pocket and Ryan Manning's a very fortunate young man there because see Barr who's back on his feet now but he was clearly going to get to the ball first he did so and I think that was a late challenge oh nine clears downfield signed a new long-term contract ball one here's Bellingham edge of the area look drop of the shoulder gets past his man right hand side he's looking up now to try and find a cross he's patient he waits here he's got Barr with him Barr right hand corner of the penalty area squares it here Equis he going to lash one he does oh he's hit the bottom corner what a strike from 25 yards out Pierre Equa picked that one out Bazuna no chance Sunderland lead by two goals to nil wow what an incredible start to the game for the home side absolutely fantastic they've been patient they've worked the ball really well they've got it into some great areas super play this time from Joel Bellingham down the right hand side he was patient he waited to pick out the pass from Pierre Equa he was waiting on the edge of the 18 yard box chopped it onto his left foot kept it low and just give Gavin Bazuna absolutely no chance in that Southampton goal it looked like he dived a little bit too late for me Mark whether he saw it late and he had bodies in front of him I do not know I'd have to see that again but again super striking what an incredible start from Sunderland well Pierre Echo was linked with a move to Stuttgart in midweek Tony Oro will be pretty pleased they kept hold of him now nice strike picked his spot I think Bazuna, as you said, it, it, it's a great shot and it's gone in the corner, but it did seem to go down a little bit late, the goalkeeper. What a start. Two goals in seven minutes here on TalkSport 2 this afternoon. And now forward come the visitors. Hadoze is brought down about 15 yards over the halfway line. Well, they've got a dream start with a goal inside 56 seconds. They've added to that now two goals to nil. 
what a wonderful start for Sunderland and once again showing if they get the ball down the other end Mickey they are a threat yeah absolutely yeah. You see they're full of confidence and they got obviously refreshed by those new faces coming onto the pitch at, uh, before kickoff. It always gives everybody a bit of a boost, a bit of a buzz in that home dressing room. And there's no doubt there's been a brilliant reaction from these Sunderland players. We saw some fantastic games here last year. Was it 4-4 they drew with Hull when we were here last yeah. season? Southampton have already had a 4-4 this season. Here's Smallbone, gets it away. Walker Peters is going to float it into the far post, but it's too deep over it, Ozzy. And he'll go out on this near side for a throw. We're at eight and a half minutes here at the Stadium of Light. The sun is shining down. The goals are flowing. What a perfect way to start game day here on Talksport 2. Talksport, don't forget, live and exclusive commentary. Sheffield United, Everton, Faker of the Sam Adderface and the former England man, Dean Ashton. And then three o'clock, we'll be joined in Danton Perry Groves. And we're live and exclusive at Stamford Bridge, Chelsea against Nottingham Forest. As here comes Sunderland again, looking to break forward. They work the ball out wide on the left hand side here's Jack Clark Clark driving in onto his right foot still going just overran it and eventually the ball with Sekumara should clear his lines but he's given it to Ekwa again 25 yards out feeds it to Bellingham Bellingham tight angle the crowd were begging Ekwa to have another shot there and it was on as well and eventually the ball out for a throwing far side for Sunderland yeah he just couldn't get the ball to settle Ekwa could he and this time it fell onto his right foot it was just bobbling in front of him but still had the thought process to try and pick out Joe Bellingham who'd made a lovely little run in behind his back line of Southampton there's gaps there isn't it at the back for Southampton Holgate coming into that back line just have not settled at all yet in this game no they haven't approaching 10 gone here two goals to nil well Southampton came here unbeaten and that unbeaten record is under heavy threat here as Bazuna's trying to play it out from the back and it's played forward and Sunderland will pick it up on the halfway line they'll go back to Anthony Patterson well it seems an eternity ago Mickey that Adam Armstrong had that shot what within 20 yeah. seconds yeah he thought, hang on Southampton have come to play here but they've been hit on the chin twice going to be interesting what they've got in response yeah certainly um, I mean it looked as if they were going to play the high press Southampton but their tactics might have changed already certainly when you find yourselves two goals behind in the first ten minutes and Sunderland look like they want more here's Jack Clark cutting down that left hand side he's on his right foot we know he can hit them from his time at Leeds opted to square the shot possibly was on there Abdul Abar has it on this near side he will lay it back Hume puts in another good looking ball far post might have been an offside flag go up there it didn't go up Bazunu comes eventually to collect it I think he'll be just happy Gavin Bazunu just to get his hands on the ball yeah he does he needs a feel of that doesn't he because the, the last two times he's, he's had a touch of it Mark he's been picking the ball out of the back of his net I think the offside flag would have actually went up there but again it's still it's Sunday they're getting out easy from that midfield area and they're able to play it out to this right hand side Trey Hume got acres of space just to be able to pick his head up and put that ball into the box and Southampton have to defend for their lives well if you just switched on you've missed 10 minutes of wonderful stuff from Sunderland they lead by two goals to nil Jack Clark with a header inside a minute after a great ball in from Trey Hume and then Pierre Equa picking his spot from 25 yards out low pass Bazunu and Southampton under big pressure here as the ball is worked for by Downs finds a nice pass to Smallbone here's Sekumara wide on the right feeds it to Smallbone flicks it back and Mara get on the end of it no he can't and Sunderland really do work it nicely and now they'll go long as Bellingham's going to give chase here Bazuna didn't know whether to come or stay at home and he's headed it straight at Bar who unluckily for him just couldn't bring down a high ball but Bazunu there caught in two minds Mickey he didn't know whether to come or stay and in the end he ended up doing neither well Mark that's just down to a little bit of communication I mean gone are the years where he used to have sweep the keeper but Bazuma on this occasion looked like he wanted to drop back into his 18 yard box because he didn't know if his defender was going to win the foot race then he had to come out eventually he headed the ball to a Sunderland player and if it fell to bar it was a 1v1 yes it was a lot hard chance because he was 30 40 yards out but here they go again three on two here now bar working his way to the box he's got Bellingham with him onto his left foot needs to pull the trigger and he does and he pushes it wide Abdullah Bar. that was a big chance he almost had too many options in the end he had Clark at the far post he had Bellingham with him but he doesn't hit the target but once again Southampton getting ripped to shreds here 2-0 Sunderland yeah, again winning the ball up high Sunderland Southampton giving the ball away but you need willing runners after that 
and they certainly had it in the first what 13 minutes of this game through Abdullah Bar who's been absolutely outstanding finding them on the left hand side setting up goals and the right hand side this occasion he just tried to wrap his left foot around it and he got it completely wrong which is why he missed the target but again has to go down as another good chance it does what a start we have had here on TalkSport 2 still 0-0 nil -nil over on TalkSport Sheffield United Everton if you've got the TalkSport app you can swipe left and right between TalkSport and TalkSport 2 if you've not got the TalkSport app well now will be a good chance a uh, good time to go and get it it's free and available in all the usual places you can click on the live spot icon it'll tell you all our live commentaries we've got live football rugby boxing all there available on the app there's a long ball forward and just finally for the first time a bit of a, a hush around the state I don't even think the locals can believe what they've seen Mickey <laughs> well I have to have a testament to both sides <laughs> what a fast start to the game both sides have gone at it touch on that Adam Armstrong opportunity after 20 seconds but I mean if you're Sunderland and you get off to a start like that in the first minute and then double your lead absolutely fantastic and it'll keep the crowd on side because it was always going to be a difficult game this against a side that I really fancy getting promotion this season yeah here now is Stuart Armstrong actually Sunderland area works his way in good challenge went in there Echo did well to tidy up as well ball played to Bellingham looked like he was being held back there but Mason Holgate will pick it up he gets it 30 yards out from goal Bellingham closes him down Walker Peters has it wide on the right hand side for Southampton what it does do it sets this game up perfectly because Sunderland happy to play on the break today Southampton want the ball they're getting plenty of it but can they fashion a comeback here 2-0 down they are there's goals elsewhere as well in the uh, championship Birmingham who could have gone top today they're behind at St Andrews uh, Nisbet's put Millwall in front in that one and Swansea lead Bristol City as well Cullen with a goal there Swansea won Bristol City nil get you up to date with the goals as they go and don't forget all the goals as they go in this afternoon on Talk Sport with Adrian Durham from 2.30 and here comes Smallbone now works it wide Mara has it Seku Mara level with the edge of the area lays it back to Walker Peters Adam Armstrong just moves out of the penalty area nice little bit of play that could be a free kick it is Walker Peters brought down about 25 out he's right of centre Mickey but this is a chance definitely for Southampton to get an attack on Patterson's goal yeah absolutely just trying to get a little bit of a hold of the ball now Southampton you can see them holding on to it having a little bit of possession getting a little bit of joy down that right hand side good play from Walker Peters when you've got the quality that Southampton have got yes look let's not forget James Ward Prowse is not here anymore because he certainly would have been taking this free kick but I'm sure they've got other willing takers I think Adam Armstrong looks as if he's across there small ball so they've certainly got the quality and this is where you have to stand tall in the wall if you're a Sunderland defender and Anthony, Pat Ant Anthony Patterson certainly has to be on his toes well, Ryan Manning is lining this one up left footed so it suits him you feel Patterson all in yellow is right in the middle of his goal Manning to hit it and it's in the end it's a comfortable save for Patterson it was going in the corner but Patterson's position was beautiful and he got across and held it at the first time of asking still 2-0 Sunderland well I think you'd have been disappointed if you were Anthony Patterson and that ball found its way into the back of the net look I think all you can do when you're taking free kicks is hit the target and that's exactly what Ryan Manning's done there will go down as a shot on target and that's Southampton just finding a little bit more confidence not really panicking hoping to try and get themselves back into the game He's got out at certain points in this game they're going to have spells because of the quality that they've got on show yeah the problem is they concede again they're in massive trouble here and every time Sunderland go forward they look like they're going to create something and now Abdullah Bar almost on the end of Bellingham's flick on not the best pass back to Bazunu was having a pretty uncomfortable uh, start to his afternoon here on Wearside but Southampton play the ball forward and now there could be a break on us Mara ignored the run forward of Downs and the ball works its way to Stuart Armstrong and Southampton now break down their left hand side 2-0 Sunderland Lee Clark inside a minute Pierre Equa from 25 yards out on 7 minutes and Southampton having a tough old afternoon here and the ball works its way forward but there's a lot to happen in this game what's happened in this first half as Jack Clark picks the ball up far side he's got Walker Peters in front of him he tried to run round him and Walker Peters inadvertently I think rolls it out for a throw in just over halfway Clark doing well there and Sunderland I think just trying to slow the game down a little bit now they got off to a great start they don't need to chase it here do they? No absolutely not I mean there's certain key battles out there Mark that I was interested to see how it was going to go at the beginning of this game 
and one I've been really looking at is Jack Clark against Kyle Walker-Peters. Uh, Jack Clark's been wonderful, like I said it before, when he, since he's put a Sunderland shirt on, you know, one of my favourite players here. And uh, he's just been fantastic. Every time he picks that ball up, he's got one thought. I get turned forward and I will take my full back on. And he's causing them all kinds of problems down that left-hand side. Yeah. He made that point about his move from Leeds to, to Tottenham Hotspur. It didn't really work out for him there, but back playing football and you can see him grow he's not played that many games as he's still got his learning to do but he's doing it on the job and doing a great job for Sunderland yeah. fantastic last season Mick bit of play in the middle of the field and Ekro I think has been penalised for just tugging back in fact it might have been Bellingham who drew the whistle and it's a free kick for Southampton and now they've got the ball again Walker Peters all a little bit tight though at the moment Back to Bednarek in the centre circle. Lovely day here. The sun beaming down on the immaculate playing surface here. Now there's a chance down the left-hand side. Doze puts the cross in. Is that a foul on the edge of the area? Well, the Southampton player went down looking for a penalty. Didn't get one. Now there'll be a free kick for Armstrong, who was brought down by Dan Neal. Southampton are furious. They didn't get a penalty. Yeah, very close, I have to say. Um, they look as if they're frustrated and annoyed, the Southampton players. Well, David Coote just waved that one on initially, or eventually a foul after that in the midfield area, but a little bit of a let off there for Sunderland. It was Manning who went down, free kick taken. Holgate back to Smallbone. We've got to sign a new contract in the last few days. Here he is now, edge of the centre circle, looking to get Southampton moving. Sunderland 2, Southampton nil. if you just joined us. Here now is Flynn Downs as well. Gets towards the six yard box, puts a great ball in, Armstrong just couldn't turn it in. Stuart Armstrong will cross it from the left hand side and it's cleared away. Adam Armstrong inches away from getting one back. That was a beautiful ball in from Flynn Downs. Oh, brilliant play again. Little give and go from Downs, found himself near the byline, whips the ball in. And Anthony Patterson, he just can't do anything about it. He's got to make himself big. But Adam Armstrong just needed to be an inch taller, didn't he? And his toe needed to point it a little bit. And that would have found its way into the back of the net. Oh, it was a Geordie. That was Gazaresque, wasn't it, for yeah. England sliding in? Oh, it still hurts. Here now, eh, down the right is uh, Walker Peters. That comes off a uh, Sunderland defender and it goes behind for a corner. So Southampton now starting to build up. A little bit of momentum. They trail by two goals to nil. We've had 20 minutes here live on TalkSport 2, the former Sunderland and England man. Mickey Gray alongside us. And Mickey, Southampton are coming back into this game. Yeah, game. I knew this would, would happen. They've got too much quality, Southampton. They've been patient with their play and they're just waiting for their opportunity to break the lines of Sunderland. They've done that in the last couple of minutes, created two really good opportunities. They've got fantastic quality and they're going to be a threat in this game. And I do see before this game's out that they will get themselves on the score sheet. Well, here comes the corner, in-swinger, left-footed, in-swinging towards the six-yard box. Patterson comes, didn't quite get there. Ball works its way to the left-hand side of the penalty area. Stuart Armstrong back to Smallbone. Is he going to hit one? He is, and he hits the side netting. I think Patterson would have had it covered. It was worth the effort, but just wide of the target, still 2-0. Yeah, Anthony Patterson there coming out to try and clear his lines from... The initial corner from Ryan Manny didn't really look too convincing. He was a bit flat-footed, he was kind of waving and flapping his hands at it. I want my goalkeeper to come and take everything, clear your lines, get that fist clenched and just make something happen. Get that ball as far away from your goal as you possibly can. Early goal in the Premier League over on TalkSport. Huge goal for Everton. Abdullah Decore has got the goal. Sheffield United nil, Everton won. It's live and exclusive over on TalkSport right now. So Everton lead at Bramall Lane here at the Stadium of Light. Sunderland who are in control, leading by two goals to nil. All down the Southampton left, and that came off the Sunderland player who was appealing there, Abdullah Bar, that it was his throw, and clearly it came off him. And Southampton will get the ball back, working it into Adam Armstrong. who's not had too many touches early on here. The early shot that got deflected behind. Mara finds Smallbone wide on the right-hand side. Midway inside the Sunderland half, lays it back to Walker Peters. Walker Peters, a couple of step overs, gets it back wide on the right hand side into Sekumara now. He gets it away to Smallbone. There are three black shirts waiting in the on the edge of the 18 yard box. The cross though doesn't come in. They'll play it back. Here's Mason Holgate. Looks now to come forward. Sunderland are all back again in the final third, and the pass to Downs is over hit. And in the end, Ballard will have it edge of his own area and looks to break out. We've seen a little bit less coming forward from Sunderland now because the passing game of Southampton's getting a little bit more on point and 
It's a little bit of a chess match at the moment. Yeah. Oh, ball given away though there by Equa. And here now is a chance of Dozy driving to the edge of the area. Hits it. Did that hit the post? I think it did. As he lashed it, goal bound. It's behind for a goal kick, but that opened up a little bit too easy. And Sam Adose, who scored against Queen's Park Rangers, almost added a second goal there. Well, the, the last thing you want to do is, well, first and foremost, is not give the ball away in your own half, sloppy like Sunderland did, but give it to a quality player like Adose and then let him come in on his strong right foot. He's got the whole goal to aim for, and I think you're right, Mark. I think it just glanced against that post. They're getting closer to Southampton. Sunderland's starting to look a little bit panicky and nervy. I'm not showing the confidence he did in the first 10 or 15 minutes of this game, and it's certainly been all Southampton over the last few minutes, and look like they're going to try and get themselves back into this game. Yeah, ball at the other end with Bazunu. He's trying to play out from the back, and does so successfully. They get it back now again, and works its way across to Mason Holgate. 2-0 here. Elsewhere in the championship, Birmingham 0, Millwall 1, this bit with a goal there for the Lions. And Swansea lead Bristol City by a goal to nil. Cullen with a goal there, and it's 1-0 in the Premier League. De Kure with a goal for Everton. Huge game at the bottom end of the Premier League. Here now, trying to work his way forward. Doze, he's dispossessed, pulls out for a throw and inside the Southampton half. 2-0 Sunderland lead. Just over uh, what, 25 minutes on the clock here at the Stadium of Light. And I still think the uh, locals are stunned. Hopefully they're all in their seats, Mickey, when that first <laughs> goal went in inside the opening minute. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's just, it was just a brilliant start to the game, I have to say. Two quality sides in front of us, playing the way football, the way it should be played on the floor. Here here now, go again. Here they go again with Neil, just dwelt on the ball too long. And now... Southampton will try and break Armstrong skips past two now this is Stuart Armstrong tries to feed Adam Armstrong just push wide edge of the area Adoze makes a run into the box waiting for more ammunition to arrive here's Adam Armstrong he his pass just bounces off a defender and it's out for a throw in not quite clicking at the moment for Southampton They're unbeaten at the start in the league but under huge pressure here as Manning's got a throw in level with the edge of the Sunderland box he'll get it back can he engineer a cross the ball nicked away from him Equa on the edge of the box gives it away again though here now is Downs Equa nicked it off him did he keep that in Murphy said he did and now he wins the throw in it's interesting that we saw Pierre Equa last year come into the championship very raw talent young player not played many games Mickey and Tony Robert said, look, he's got to learn. He made a couple of mistakes. He's got to learn on the job. He looks an entirely different player now. Yeah, he does. He's certainly involved in all the good stuff that Sunderland are involved in. Um, I mean, he's got himself a fantastic goal already in this game. Just giving the ball away the last couple of times that he's had it. Maybe that's just that little bit of inexperience. Well, again, you're playing against a quality side. You have to be so precise with your passing. But it looks as if he's filled out a little bit as well, Mark. It looks as if he's got that physical presence in that midfield area. Yeah, it does. Ball over the top. Walker Peters, can he keep it in? Well, he hoists it high. Refer uh, linesman on the far side eventually said the ball had done out. Looked to the naked eye as though it had done. And we are uh, two goals to nil here in favour of Sunderland. 26 minutes on the clock, Mark Wilson with the former England and Sunderland man Mickey Gray will be joined uh, later on this afternoon Ian Danta and the former Arsenal man Perry Groves live and exclusive at Stamford Bridge Chelsea against Nottingham Forest only place you'll hear it on national radio right here on TalkSport 2 across on TalkSport now Sheffield United nil, Everton 1 and at 2.30 Adrian Durham and the gang will join us for all the goals as they go in on game day live there's a ball over on the far side with Southampton. They've done well. They work it here. Sekumar into the area. Tries to pull it back. Comes off a Sunderland defender. And straight in the arms of Patterson at the moment. Things just going Sunderland's way. Yeah. But you can also hear the little murmurs in the stadium, can't you, Mark? Because uh, Sunderland over the last five or six minutes have, have been a little bit sloppy in possession. They're giving the ball away, which has given Southampton the opportunity. As I talked about this high press that they've got. When they get the chance to shut you down, they're there, they're in your face. You're not going to get space and time, which is why you've got to show better quality when you're on the ball. And just be a little bit more patient. Ball with Echo gets it away over on the far side. Here's Jack Clark now. Clark down the left. There's no one in the box yet, so he's going to drive to the byline, waiting for the support to arrive, and his cross is blocked. Really direct from Jack Clark. Not a lot on there, but made something happen for Sunderland and wins a corner. Yeah, that was a good foot race as well, wasn't it? Jack Clark against Walker Peters there. Just got that little half a yard on him. Walker Peters stretching out to give a corner away. But what I said, it's a very good test that Clark against Walker Peters. 
It's going to be interesting to see how it continues through the rest of this game at Sunderland again with another opportunity from a set piece here. Yeah, Bradley Dack going to swing it in from that far side. He's Sunderland left. He's right footed. Going to swing it in. Plenty of red and white shirts to aim at. Ball towards the far post. Sirkin couldn't quite get on the end of it. They'll keep this in though, Sunderland. Down on this near side. And a chance now to lay the ball back. First time cross goes in from O'Neill. Ball headed up in the air. Not cleared yet. Southampton get it partially away. Ball worked out wide. Dak might get there. Does get there. Just had to have a touch. Took him away from goal. Floats it far post. And... Well, the Sunderland fans are pilling for a penalty. Echo never got off the ground. It's behind for a goal kick. I just wondered there, was Bradley Dak going to take the chance and hit that first time? He opted to bring it down. Didn't quite have the touch he needed. Yeah, I think you took the words right out of my mouth there, Mark, because as that fell to Bradley, look, it was with a different, difficult angle. The ball was coming down. It's a very difficult opportunity if Bradley did take it on first time. Look, he's not been involved in the game as much as he probably wanted to so far in the game, but put a lovely corner in a second ago. But that was a chance there. Look, he's a goal scorer, Bradley. You don't lose that. It's early on in the game. You're two up. Take the risk. Take the opportunity of taking that shot on first time. I was going to say, if ever the crowd are going to forgive you, it's when you're 2-0 up at home, isn't it, in the first half, if you blaze one high and wide. Absolutely. Knocked it to go for the touch with Tony Mowbray, of course, at Blackburn. So Mowbray knows him well and a bit of quality, but... As you said, I think the game in patches, and no disrespect to Bradley, that's been a bit quick for him, hasn't it? It's yeah. bypassed him a little it bit. It certainly has. I mean, the qualities came from, from different positions. Look, as the game goes on, I'm sure he'll grow into it. He's got too much quality, Bradley. And when you give him that opportunity in that final third, if he finds that half a yard, he certainly knows where the back of the net is. He does. Bellingham's made a, made a nice run through the middle, but Sirkin didn't get it to him. Here is uh, Dak now, just a little bit deeper, just trying to get a touch of it, we're approaching half an hour gone at the stadium alike, 2-0 Sunderland lead all play forward, Holgate read that well but couldn't control it and Echo now picks it up just over halfway. he'll feed it in to Bellingham nice little touch, here's Dak, plays the ball wide, can they keep it in, they will oh they did keep it in but Bars cross, he slipped as he went to uh, cross it and it's behind for a goal kick but Dak there with a vision just over hits it slightly yeah but it's the movement isn't it I think you can see it you know you're not the resting on the laurels and not watching the pass and admiring it you can see the willing runners trying to get in behind there I think as Abdullah Bar got himself to the byline there Mark instead of having a look up to see who's in the box because the ball's running out you just concentrate on making good contact with it because I think you could have got that ball across to the box a lot better yeah Ballard a little bit indecisive at the back there maybe Patterson could have given him a call from the long clearance downfield but Trey Hume was there to just head it back to Patterson and it remains 2-0 15 to go to the break live here on TalkSport 2 at the Stadium Alight TalkSport 2 your home of the EFL and plenty more live commentaries to come across the season got some international football on the horizon as well international break after this one that's a nice pass forward from O'Neill Dak will bring it down feeds it to Clark Clark looks up Walker Peters retreats Clark driving in direct onto his right foot hits it but didn't quite get hold of it well I think you're brave if you're showing Jack Clark in on his right foot because he will hit them scored some goals in the prem in the uh, Premier League for Leeds uh, like that or in the championship for Leeds, sorry, like that. as unnecessary free kick given away by Clark. And Southampton come forward. But Sunderland just seem to have uh, held off Southampton for a little bit and have had a couple of chances of their own recently. Yeah, going back into the game again, aren't they? And I think you know, with, with Jack Clark over on that left-hand side, it must be a nightmare to play against Mar because he's comfortable going either onto his left or his right foot. So as a defender, you're trying to show him one way and it's very difficult if he's directly running at you because he's got that great balance of moving either way, which is why I said it's going to be a difficult afternoon for Walker-Peters. But I said... Southampton look as if they've now, you know, they look comfortable, they look as if they've got that swagger about them, certainly in those midfield areas, but when it comes to the final third, still really waiting for that great opportunity, they put some lovely balls into the box, they've had a couple of close shaves with strikes, hit the side of the post, but you know, it's still not working for Russell Martin in front of goal. No, they've not created too many genuine opportunities, have they? They've, they've been shots from distance rather than closely created chances, just that one cross across across the six yard box when Adam Armstrong couldn't turn it in they did have the penalty shout declined and here now is Armstrong but the pass to Stuart Armstrong wasn't the best from Adam and 09 should clear his lines and actually does better than that he earns his side a goal kick so well defended Luke 09 
and Patterson will wander across in the sunshine to collect the ball and Sunderland will look to play out from the back as they do they lead by two goals to nil uh, Luke O'Neill doing ever so well there not just a football hero these days Mark I think he's a local hero saved a dog from uh, drowning I think it was last week down really? Seaburn Beach so um, I think that made the back pages more than the uh, the football did because they drew against Coventry didn't they but um, yeah I mean they love him here he's got great personality he's a good character I think he's just signed a new three or four year contract as well um, he loves it up north and it's fantastic having players like that who want to extend their, their time in the North East because they're the players that you, you relate to a little bit more because they, they feel more more involved in the club the longer they stay, which is great for the area. Yeah, it is indeed. Ball with Ecker at the back. Plays it out on that far side. Sunderland trying to work it forward. Smallbone heads it down the touchline and Ecker will get it back. Level with his uh, own 18-yard box. And Clark will bring it down midway inside his own half. Left hand touchline, robust in the challenge, almost got past Flynn Downs. He, West Ham Loney and Sunderland are in there, hassling and Harry. And Equa comes in with a crunching tackle. And Sunderland have won it. And now the break could be on here. Clark was brought down. Sekumara take a yellow card. That was never in doubt. Well, Sunderland there, Mickey, they won about five 50-50 tackles on the spin, and that gets the crowd off their feet. Yeah, I mean, you can hear the cheers, can't you, when the challengers go in. They love that. They love a 50-50 in the northeast, probably as much as a goal, and it was four or five in a row, and Jack Clark eventually coming out with it. Looked as if he was running towards that back line again at Southampton, and Sakumara, I think it was brought more down to a little bit of frustration from the wide player just chopped the legs away from Clark then it had to be a yellow card yeah 34 gone 2-0 Sunderland lead Jack Clark and Pierre Echo with the goals and you have to say Tony Mowbray wonderful start for his side but I think he'd be pretty happy with, with the way that they responded to that bout of Southampton pressure and Southampton with it all to do I think Russell Martin will think if they nick one back before half time then they're more than capable of winning this game anyway but just raise their morale a little bit Sunderland will be hoping can they nick a third goal as Ekwa again a swagger about his play as he wins the ball and now it works wide here to Dan Neal Neal looks up Bradley Dax waiting in the middle took up a good position they didn't find him here's Abdullah Bar. gets it back to Ekwa now Ekwa just moves it along to Dan Ballard who comes forward he'll work it wide on the Sunderland left hand side Clark's just come in Smallbone is all over him that'll be a free kick though and they clearly know Clark is the threat now. They seem to be reduced to just fouling him at the moment, Southampton. Yeah, I mean, there's certain players in the Premier League, Mark, that we know every single season. I mean, they're always up there, aren't they, as the most fouled players in the Premier League. And I'm sure Jack Clark has got to be one of those in the Championship. He, he never gets a split second on the ball. He's always got somebody close around him because they know what quality he's got. He's been on the ground so many times in this game. Obviously, we've just seen a yellow card from the foul on him tomorrow. And again, just then before, but gives Sunderland another chance. And uh, it's going to be whipped in by Dak from the far side. Floats it far post. Trey Humes unmarked. Couldn't quite in the end get ahead of Bednar. It closed the space down and won the header. And it's out for a throw in 25 yards away from the corner flag. Sunderland right hand side here. Hume will get it back. And O'Neill will have it just uh, over the halfway. He looks to put in a ball to the far post, which is well dealt with by Walker Peters. Brought down by Mara. He gets it away. And forward now come Southampton with Holgate. Holgate. Just brings the ball back. Manning will recycle possession and Bednarek will bring it up towards the halfway line. 2-0. About eight and a half minutes to go in his first half. It's been a pulsating start to game day here across the Torsport Network. Southampton behind here. Sheffield United behind at home to Everton over on Torsport right now as well. As Walker Peters, Southampton just passing it for passing its sake at the moment inside their own half and Sunderland have realised if they go close down there might be an error in that as uh, Dan Neal just dropped Mason Holgate there, little bite around the ankles, welcome to the championship Mason. <laughs> It just wonder Mark, don't you? I mean, the, the problem that Southampton have had so far this season, um, look, albeit, you know, they, they're still doing really well, they're in fourth position in the championship, they overplay at times at the back and make mistakes, and I, I just wonder whether that's one of the reasons why they brought Holgate in, look, doesn't really look comfortable, I have to be honest with you, so far. 
but people like Harwood Bellis coming into the Southampton squad as well I think it's a matter of time before he starts playing regular week in week out because they've got to shore it up with the back you can't keep conceding and expect to win football matches every single week no you're asking a lot now they've got a free kick just over the halfway line taken quickly by Southampton Howard Bellis had a great spell on loan at Burnley last season ball falls from Stuart Armstrong ran down the cul-de-sac and Bellingham well Clark made a great run but Bellingham just couldn't find him he does find him eventually Bellingham now surrounded by black shirts will find Dan Neal Dan Neal's given the man on cry he'll work it out to Abdullah Bar. Sunderland need to get some bodies into the box here's Bar stepping over stepping over goes down theatrical and he's going to get booked for that 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 was bordering on Tom Daly-esque wasn't it the dive there well he he was stepping over, stepping over, and then he fell over, yeah. looking for Abdullah Bar. Well, I, I think you, know, you have to hold your hands up and say, deserve a yellow card from Abdullah Bar. We talked about you know, the great start he's had to this game. But as he got his head up in the right side, right wing position there, he had one thought process because he's got his head up. There's nobody in the box room to pick out. So he had to try and skip past two players, try to win himself a foul or a penalty in this case because he was in the 18-yard box. Just stay on your feet. There might be contact there, but you've got another opportunity to get yourself on the score sheet. Silly, silly, silly place to go down the ground. Yeah. Free kick given away there by uh, Dan Ballard, who went strongly into the back of the Southampton player. Free kick. Six to go to the break here on TalkSport 2. We have early drama here at the Stadium of Light, and we're going to get late drama into the first half. As a good touch from Neil, but a great challenge there from Flynn Downs where it breaks to Clark and Clark once again is on his bike and Clark now has only got Bednarek to beat and eventually goes down right on the edge of the D Holgate closed him down well Jack Clark didn't need a red and white shirt around him he just drove forward from halfway and eventually he's brought down edge of the D and a free kick in a dangerous position for Sunderland uh, it, it's just brilliant wing play from Jack Clark he's been outstanding in this first half Whenever he picks that ball up, one thought, he gets on the half turn and starts driving at the back four. The Southampton defenders, they're just standing there. They don't know what to do with him. But I think he would have fell in the end mark because I think he was running down an alley and there was no end to that alley. But he's gone to ground. Brilliant play. Tried to work it again onto his right foot. And what are we, 22 yards out here? Bradley Dack looks as if he wants to take this free kick. Southampton at the back really looks shaky to me. Adam Armstrong is his former Blackburn teammate standing in front of him about two yards away from the ball Bradley Dack just laughs, marks out his run up here Bazunu being beaten twice this afternoon is there going to be a third first half goal for Sunderland five to go to the break Bradley Dack the only player over this one there's a five man wall here comes Dack now it's oh. beaten away by Bazunu oh. and the follow up was missed there by Sunderland that was a great chance and I think it was Trey Hume of all the circuit it was on the follow-up, just couldn't turn it into an empty net. Ah, oh, what a chance. I mean, it's a brilliant free kick, isn't it, from Bradley Dack. Initially gets a lot of whip and pace on it. That's the question of Bazunu. Oh, you're right, I think it is. It's either Trey Hume. Oh, he's circling. Circling on yeah. the ground there. Probably fell to his weaker foot. Comes to him very quick. Not used to being in that position. But again, massive opportunity for Sunderland to get the third goal. It was. Four to go to the break. Corner for Sunderland. More danger. Ball whipped in near post. He's volleyed away. It'll, well, I think he'll be offside here. The man on the far side, Dak, who didn't touch it. Well, the referee said he went to play the ball. It will be a free kick for Southampton. But Mazunu there, a little bit fortunate. His parry went straight into the field of play. But fortunately for him, Sunderland couldn't convert to a third goal still 2-0 but a commanding lead as it stands for Sunderland as we go into the final few minutes of the first half here and the ball played for by Pizzuno looking for Mara Serkin did well there got up high wins the header finds Equa Equa's pass back to Serkin not the best he might have to go back to Patterson he will Patterson under pressure from Adam Armstrong as well and clears it towards halfway where Abdullah Bai is beaten in the air a nice touch from Stuart Armstrong that's got to be a free kick against Luke O'Neill and then Armstrong takes it quickly and well, O'Neill's going to get booked for that wow. and <sighs> is he trying to stop the quick free kick I, I don't know about that one uh, he's, at, he's got a blast it at him hasn't he Armstrong he knew exactly what he was doing there and O'Neill goes into the book I think that's a really harsh yellow card I have to say that you could see he was moving away from the ball there Luke O'Neill 
Uh, look, players will always play the game, Mark. They'll try and get an advantage on your opposition if you possibly can. And I think that's exactly what Stuart Armstrong's done in that situation. What he's supposed to do as a defender, look, you've made the foul, you hold your hands up, you start moving away from the ball. Stuart Armstrong's tried to get on with it very quickly, but as a defender, you can't get away from the ball 10 yards as quick as that. And I think the referee, David Coot, should have had a look at himself there. That was a really harsh yellow card. Well, the free kick worked into the box. Far side, headed away. It's not yet clear. Walker-Peters picks it up right inside of the area. Drives to the byline. Can he find a teammate? He had a chance to pull that back. He tried to cross it and he earns a corner here. But Walker-Peters, when he has got in down that side, one good delivery they've whipped in from that side, but that was another opportunity. Yeah, there's no doubt they've got they've got threats on the on the pitch, Southampton. Too much quality. Walker Peters, just that little drop of the shoulder, showing his pace. And I think again, you know, in the right 18-yard box this time, Sirkin doing the job that he's out there to do. Corner for Southampton. Late stages, first half here. Sunderland lead by two goals to nil. Everybody back for Sunderland, ball in towards Patterson, comes this time, he does get something on it, but it goes up in the air, edge of the area, Dak didn't clear it, now the break, well the break could be on there, and they've smashed it downfield, and if they can keep this in Sunderland, and they have kept it in, over on the far side, support arriving in the middle, is there a late oh. third call, and Barr, who kept it in so well, then just overruns it, and gives the ball away. And now he's got to be careful, he doesn't give away a silly free kick because they'll have to pend in their own corner. Ball one back, here's Clark. Clark goes to ground, wanted a free kick. Hasn't got one on this occasion. Then a strong challenge goes in there. That was a robust one from Sirkin. And it's a free kick, edge of the area. But on the break, Abdullah Bar should he have done better there? Uh, he's got to do better, Mark. <laughs> what a ball again from Jack Clark, who's just basically trying to clear his lines. But it falls into the path of that willing runner, Abdullah Bar, again down that left-hand side. And he's, he's initially in a 1v1 situation, but he slows it down. He slows it down. Then you can see the Southampton defenders getting themselves back behind, which makes it more difficult for him to try and create something, whether it's a cross or a shot himself. And he just got it completely wrong, I trying just, to play a short pass. Yeah, I just wonder, Mickey, as Equus won it back high up the field, goes past his man, into the final 30 goals, and a four red and white shirts with him. Equus goes for oh! the goal! Oh! Oh, what a strike! Pierre Equa on his left foot. Well, he scored one earlier on his right from 25 yards. And he's beaten Bazunu from 30 yards out. There was nothing on. He gets it on his left foot and he whips it in the near post. Sunderland have got their third goal. What a strike it is. Pierre Equa at the double. Sunderland three. Southampton nil. Wow. From a Sunderland perspective, this is what dreams are made of. Nobody would have expected to be going in at half-time. Three goals to the good. I mean, it's just been absolutely outstanding. And from that man, Equa, Pierre Equa, is absolutely brilliant. First goal with his left foot, keeps it low. This time, it's a little bit more of a different angle. Straight from the edge of the 18-yard area. And as he works it onto his left foot, he just whips it into the corner to give Bam uh, Gavin Bazuna absolutely no chances. Too much pace on it. What a first half from the home side. And what a first half from Pierre Equa. Wow. Well, we said they scored in the opening minute and they scored in the final minute of the first half. Three goals to nil. Is that a hammer blow to Southampton's hope of going top of the championship this afternoon? Two, Two added on minutes at the end of the first half. Southampton, I don't think, can get in the dressing room quick enough. Russell Martin with work to do. Tony Mowry stands on the edge of his technical area. He must be like a proud dad. He's looking out at these young guns of Sunderland. They've made a conscious decision here at the stadium alike to get in young talent that they think can grow and develop here under Mowbray's tutelage and you have to say Equa is a fine example because he's a completely different player to the one we saw last season wearing the red and white of Sunderland yeah, you say Mark I mean he's, he's filled out as we touched on before he's got that swagger that bit of confidence about him and what a left foot he's got and what's great about it Mark we talked about the three new players who got paraded on the pitch before the game they're, they're sat watching this and they're thinking, I cannot wait to get involved in this, which is great for Sunderland and great for the squad. Here at Southampton, the two minutes have already been played. 
Uh, Southampton looking to work in down there, right hand side, a frustrated cross and another potential break could be on if Clark can get to the ball first, he does get to the ball first, he's got Bellingham inside him and eventually the door is closed on Clark who falls to the ground as Bellingham then puts in a strong challenge there, that was a strong challenge as well on uh, Mara and Clark is down I think out of sheer fatigue Mickey he's run himself yeah. up and down that touchline so often this afternoon he certainly has he's getting himself back to his feet now but that was a strong challenge there he's just limping and we've got a half time now Mark as well what a first half Sunderland in the red and white stripes attacking from right to left the all black strip of Southampton Shea Adams will get us back underway here at the Stadium of Light three goals to nil and uh, Southampton have given the ball away instantly from the kickoff. Bar down the right hand side. Uh, Busted to get into the penalty area here. Abdullah Bar has it, lays it back. And they'll look now with Hume. That's a nice ball over the top. The offside flag hasn't gone up here. S down the right hand side. Ball in. Chance for Bellingham. Just couldn't head in. And the shot from an angle from Sirkin is last wide. Bellingham there, Mickey Gray. He looks certain to score. He just couldn't get ahead on it. Well, I mean, I don't know if he he was six foot two and then went to five foot eight there mark but i thought that was a brilliant opportunity albeit again really early on in this second half but it's brilliant play from sunderland i think it's dan neil who just whips that ball into the area but it looked like he timed his run joe bellingham absolutely perfectly just needed to make contact with it but skimmed across the top of his head there chance gone but again it's a bright start from the home side yeah great header from Ballard all the way through to Bazunu who is in goal for Southampton who've got a back four of Walker Peters Bednarek Holgate and Manning it was uh, Downs and Smallbone now in midfield with Cher them Samadozi and Sikumara up in support of Adam Armstrong who will lead the line for Sunderland Patterson is the goalkeeper uh, it's Sir King Ballard on nine and Hume the back four Pierre Equa and Dan Neal in midfield with Clark Dak and Barr behind Joe Bellingham who starts up top a Southampton Mickey Gray 90 seconds into the second half not started too well uh, I mean uh, you can talk about having experience Mark uh, and, and players who come in you think they're going to be good signings for Southampton and I'm sure he will as time goes by but Mason Holgate looks really really sloppy at the back um, funny enough I was talking to, um, to Don Goodman uh, before the game kicked off and he said when he was at West Bromwich Albion he made mistakes and I'm seeing those mistakes in front of me in this game today they look really shaky at the back Southampton yeah they do indeed as the ball worked back by Flynn Downs to Bazunu who clears on his left foot ball headed away by Ballard picked up by Pierre Equa who now finds a pass to Clark and Clark's got a bit of room in front of him Walker Peters Gets sick there, but Sirkin is on the overlap. Sirkin pulls it back, free and oh. straight at the keeper. And now the cross comes back in yeah. and he's bundled in. And it's Bradley Deck. Sunderland lead by four. What a start to the second half. What a performance this is. Southampton are all over the shop. And Sunderland are making the pay. Point blank finish from Bradley Dack. Sunderland lead by four goals to nil. Ah, uh, we talk about the goal itself initially. I mean, Jack Clark and Sirkin down this left-hand side. It's just an overload. The 2v1 situation. Sirkin just whips that ball to the six-yard box. And Bradley Dack, he's always had that brilliant timing into the area. What a save from Pizzuno initially. But when the ball bounces, down in the six yard box Bradley Dack just pokes his leg out and puts that ball in the back of the net thrilled to pieces for him he's had so many injuries let's hope it works for him in a Sunderland shirt and it certainly looks like it is doing today but let's go to the defending from Southampton it is so easy for Sunderland to get in behind them because they're just working as individuals there's no cohesion between the back four of Southampton they're just trying to clear the lines it's clearly not working Russell Mark must be Russell Mark must be scratching his head wondering what is going on at the back so sloppy from Premier League experienced defenders and they're just making mistake after mistake after mistake it's been really poor from Southampton at the back really poor four goals to nil what a start to this game what a start to game day exclusive on Talksport 2 Chelsea against Nottingham Forest to come but Sunderland here, four goals to the good. I've got a question for you, Mickey Gray. If yeah. you made the trip from Southampton, <laughs> what will it be, seven hours with a stop? 
Are you thinking about going home now? Well, Matt, I mean, let's think about that. What? So, what, we're thinking four or five o'clock in the morning, coaches must be leaving. You find yourselves three down at half-time. You want a reaction from your players coming out in the second half. Jay Adams, they've made that change. He's not had a touch of the ball yet. I mean, how frustrated are you after you're a Southampton supporter seeing a performance like this? Here now is Swollen. That's a nice ball in chest for Adam Armstrong. Great block. And I think the Sunderland player has uh, picked up an injury there trying to block it. And it doesn't look nice. Is it Ballard, I think, who threw everything at putting the block in. And I think he's come off worse and the Sunderland players and the referee quickly around him. And this is a worrying development for Sunderland. Yeah, it certainly is. I mean, initially, I think it is Dan Ballard who finds himself on the ground. I mean, it's a brilliant block tackle, isn't it, from Adam Armstrong. Good play from Southampton. It worked the ball actually really well down the right-hand side. It's that pull back towards the penalty area. You see Armstrong's made a really good run. He's now put, took up a position on that left-hand side, but... Just hope that the defender's okay, still on the ground. You can see the Sunderland players were waving the physios on straight away. Yeah, let's hope that he makes a speedy recovery and get himself back on his feet and hopefully continue for the rest of the game. But if not, I think everybody in the stadium keeps their fingers crossed because it looked a bad one. He's a, tw a knee twist or something, Mark, it looked yeah. like on his ankle, yeah. He threw everything, didn't he, in? And it looks innocuous in itself, but clearly there's a lot of worry around him and... Well, I'm sure Tony Mowbray will be getting the subs warmed up away to our left, but, yeah, it's one of those you hope that it's not as serious as it looks, and, well, Southampton just stood around. They're not even... In, I thought Southampton here might be having a bit of a team talk. They just stood individuals looking into space. They can't believe what's happened. They're 4-0 down here. And from the, the... From the... After they had that corner on, what, 30 seconds, they've been second best, haven't they? Yeah. Yeah, they have. Um, keep conceding goals. Maybe they're a little bit too embarrassed to run across to the manager, Mark, because they'll be worried of, of actually what he's going to say to them. I think Russell Martin's probably looking at that back line and thinking, I've made a change up front, but really, I should have made a change at the back. I think it's a matter of time before Hallwood Bellas comes onto the pitch, whether they change the system and go to a three. Look, it's a little bit too late for them now. You can't exactly see them getting four goals in this game. I mean, I hope I don't eat my words at the end of this, this match, let's be honest with you, but it's just been so scrappy from back to front from Southampton they had some good opportunities in the first half they weren't clinical enough to put the ball in the back of the net but if you haven't got that balance of keeping clean sheets and scoring goals I know they've had a good start to the season but it catches you up eventually and it certainly looks like it's caught them up today well, Dan Ballard is hobbling off to this near side but he's up on his feet that is good look you know, you pointed this out when you were talking to Wally before the, the start of play about Southampton conceding goals. They've now got the worst defensive record in the Championship. This is the second time in five games that they've conceded four yeah. goals. Yeah, I mean, 11 goals in the Championship. <laughs> the, the season's just started. It's too many goals to concede. Yeah, that's twice now they've conceded four what, in the first five games of the season something has to change you know we talk about Hall again I don't want to keep pointing the finger at him because there's other defenders out there but when you've got Howard Bellis who is tried and tested in the championship you know got promotion with Burnley had a brilliant season I don't understand why he's not playing today well we will he's on the bench as uh, Dan Ballard does come back on much to the relief of everyone here at the Stadium of Light I can tell you that Bristol City have got a level at Swansea Swansea 1, Bristol City 1 Sykes with the equaliser just three minutes into the second half there here though, four goals to nil and over on TalkSport, Sheffield United 2, Everton 1 Sport for choice today on the TalkSport network if you've got the app you can swipe left and right between the two Southampton now have got the ball back and well, what a difference five minutes can make. At 2-0, just before half-time, you're thinking maybe Southampton can get back into it. They might get a chance here as Adams trying to get on the end of Armstrong's header. But Patterson comes out and claims it. You're thinking at 2-0, Mickey, Southampton's gone, this is his game on. But that echo second goal and then to start so badly as they did in the second half. And Russell Marty must be thinking, hang on, what? I've just wasted 15 <laughs> minutes talking to you at half-time and you come out and do that. Yeah, no, absolutely. It's basically all your tactics just go out of the window, don't they, in that 15-minute half-time break because you ask more from the players and they're not giving you more. You make that change to try and make it a positive um, change for your team and it, they just haven't got going. Look, they've, they've had half chances, Mark, haven't they? You know, they get themselves into good positions. 
but it's about putting the ball in the back of the net doesn't matter how, what the build up's like when that ball comes into the box you have got to be clinical that's why they brought Shea Adams on but I'm sure at 3-0 down coming onto the pitch he's wondering you know am I going to win the game for Southampton today you're just going out to try and claw your way back into the game and it's not happened for them Sunderland have got a throw in down by the Southampton corner flag in the left back position they're trying to work it into the edge of the area they'll earn themselves a corner Holgate pokes the ball behind for a corner to Sunderland look it's not often in the championship Mickey you can enjoy the second half but at 4-0 these fans are lapping this up aren't they well a absolutely I mean Tony Mowbray's probably thinking a little bit different he wants his players to stay concentrated of course he does and if they can add to this lead then fantastic but I think discipline let's not forget they want to try and keep a clean sheet if they possibly can they've just got to try and keep doing their job right and if they keep doing that right it'll be a beautiful day for them well, Tony Mowbray's just given the fans we're on a goal away to our right uh an applause, a round of applause, ball crossed into the far post from the corner, headed across, goal by Bellingham, not initially cleared, oh nines in Chris to shoot, he's going to shoot, oh, he dips <laughs> from 35 yards, it landed, inches over the bar, I think to be fair to Bazoon, he's got it covered, but the confidence flowing through the Black Cats veins here, oh nine and Chris to shoot, chests it down and volleys it inches over. Well, wouldn't, it, wouldn't that have been the perfect week for, for Luke oh nine? We talked about him being a local hero, signing his new contract as well, and trying out what 35 yard out volley. I mean, <laughs> it's just, everything's working for them today, isn't it? Great strike, and I think Bazuna panicked in the end. He did. Here's Clark driving forward 20 yards out into the area. Is he going to be out? Muscle oh. gets the shot away. Bazuna made a great save. Low to his right hand side. It looked like Clark was going to be the meat in the sandwich. Two defenders closed down on him, but Clark somehow got the shot away. And Bazunu, you have to say that's a fine save to keep it at 4 0. What a save. What a save, Mark. Sorry for jumping in, Mark, there as well. But look, I've seen some good performances from Sunderland over the last couple of seasons. But I think when you when you look at the quality, what they're up against today, this probably has to go down as the best performance I've seen in a couple of seasons. Sunderland have been outstanding from front to back. They all look as if they're enjoying themselves. I talked about bringing those new players into the dressing room and showing them off on the pitch before the game. And certain players leaving the club, it sometimes galvanises you. Well, it's certainly done that today. It has. Good, strong challenge over on the far side. Ball out from Hume for a throw into Southampton. And we've had 12 gone second half on Talksport 2. Sunderland 4, Southampton 0. Well, I saw Blackburn score eight in midweek at Harrogate, but this is an entirely different proposition. This is Sunderland really doing a job on Southampton here. 4-0. The fans are in great voice, but Southampton will come forward. The problem they've got is Clark tries to clear the ball away and does find a teammate. Neil was fouled. Referee comes back for an earlier free kick for Sunderland. The problem Southampton's got, if they go out and chase the game, Sunderland are just going to sit there and pick them off at will, aren't they? Yeah, and I mean, there's been some big scores against these two sides, Mark, and, and Sunderland have been on the end of them. An 8-0 drubbing from Southampton, I think, back in 2017. They also beat them 4-0 as well, and you're right. You know, this is where you've got to show professionalism, isn't it? You, you know, you have some pride in keeping a clean sheet, and if you can get more goals, brilliant. There is going to be gaps at both ends of the pitch, no doubt about that. But well, when you get those chances, make sure you put the ball in the back of the net. Well, here's Adam Armstrong breaking into the area. He feeds it wide. Cross across goal, looking for Shea Adams. And Ballard was there. Last ditch sliding challenge. Six yards out from his own goal. Puts it behind for a corner for Southampton. Yeah, I mean, they've still got quality Southampton. I mean, you can't switch off. Well, that's Shea Adams once again on the end of things. Just put a quick corner in there, which Sunderland have cleared. But they're going to create opportunities. But still more than 30 minutes left in the game. They'll still think they have a chance of getting something from it. Yeah, well, they won't give in. They've still got over half an hour left, and they get one quickly, then who knows what may happen. But 4 0 is an awfully big mountain to climb as Russell Martin comes to the edge of his technical area. Here now is Walker Peters looking to get it wide to Mara. He has it on the left hand side, lays it back now. 
Here's Bednarek, moves it to Holgate again, Sunderland just dropped back in, is Holgate going to have a shot, he is from distance, oh, Patterson got that one wrong, and he's a very lucky boy, he went down almost like a cricketer in the outfield, put his knee down to pick it up, it squirms off his fingertips and goes inches wide of the post, that would have been a horror moment, it's the corner, it could have been so much worse for Patterson. Well, you can't believe it, I talked about being disciplined and staying switched on and having that professionalism, he just switched off Anthony Patterson as if that ball was going to was wasn't going to come to him. Lucky boy. Corner for Southampton, a gift corner. Can they turn it into a goal? Ball floated far post, headed across. Well, into the side netting, really. That was a chance. Holgate, free header, far post. He's got to hit the target or at least put it back in the six-yard box. That's right, two brilliant opportunities in it. The first one he made himself, Mason Holgate, super strike causing all kinds of problems to Anthony Patterson in that Sunderland goal nearly found its way into the back of the net but you're right, centre half coming up, free header no challenge on him he has to hit the target he does, what with an hour gone he wasted that opportunity there's been an equaliser over on Talk Sport, Dan Juma has got an Everton second goal Sheffield United 2, Everton 2 it's live and exclusive over on Talk Sport right now, Faye Carruthers with Sam Matterface and the former England man Dean Ashton. Game on at Bramall Lane. Here now, Southampton coming forward again. They'll work it out wide. On their left, cross comes in towards Adams, tries to chest it down. He goes down. It was waved away. Referee was having none of that. As the ball played back by Bednarek. And he now gets the ball away, courtesy of his goalkeeper over on the uh, far side and Southampton will look to build again well Mark I'm not saying that they were similar but you're in the 18 yard box and Shea Adams has clearly tried to go down there to win a penalty for his side I I'm sure there was a bit of contact on the back of his head he's up on his feet again already and was it Abdullah Bar who got the yellow card for diving in the first half I think if you're going to have the right balance from first to second half David Coote's probably going to have to have a look at that one and think you know, did he deserve a yellow card he's got away with it this time I think that was a bit of a dive from, from Shea Adams Yeah, I think in the uh, Olympic scale of it Abdullah Bar was gold that was more bronze <laughs> yes I agree, <laughs> I agree a dive's a dive though it is here comes Southampton forward now up towards the halfway line they're looking to work it forward but Sunderland in the set, the play, and now they're looking to bring it forward, and now they have it wide on the left, early ball in, he's looking towards Jack Clark, it was cleared away, and now Flynn Downs will try and work it further clear, Ryan Fraser's come on, I think in the aftermath of that fourth goal he's come on, he's over on the far side, Ryan Fraser has come on, and the ball is with Walker Peters who now finds Shea Adams down the right hand side there could be danger here Fraser's trying to get into the middle here's Sekumar edge of the air is he going to unleash a shot wanted too long on it oh he's done well to retain possession challenge comes in Downs will move it across to Armstrong thought about the shot moves it to Fraser who gets booed the Newcastle connection not forgotten here Paul Damara far post and he's headed it over it's another presentable opportunity for Southampton it's another wasted opportunity and we're about to see changes from Sunderland who uh, are about to bring on uh, two changes so uh, Joe Bellingham is one that is going off he is going to be replaced by the number nine Namir Lewis Hamir is coming on and also coming on in the action is Alex Pritchard who will replace Bradley Dack for Bradley Dack's afternoon well he's got his goal he'll be pretty happy with it and it's high fives all round as uh, a double change there made by the home side we're also about to see a change here for the visitors as well as uh, Shea Charles is about to come on and he will replace Mason Holgate I dare say this is going to be a change of formation well it has to as not it I think Southampton have got to come up with some answers um, Holgate so he's had those couple of opportunities in the opposition's half but I think defensively is maybe a question mark over him how fit is he at the beginning of the season Charles coming into that back line but it still looks like a flat back four to me and still no Harwood Bellis which really surprises me I think the changes 
self-explanatory for uh, for Sunderland. Bradley Dack and Joe Bellingham run themselves into the ground, still looking for that 100% fitness. But Pritchard's clever. He keeps hold of the ball. Bit of experience in there as well. And Hamir coming up front with a bit of uh, a bit of youthfulness, if you like. And let's hope he can uh, he can enjoy his day in a Sunderland shirt. Yeah. Well, four 0 at home. Not many better times you'll get to come on as a substitute. And still about 26 minutes to play here on TalkSport 2. Jack Clark fired Sunderland in front with a lovely header inside 60 seconds. Then a double from Pierre Equa. One from 25 yards on seven minutes. Then from 30 yards round half time. Killed it in past Pizzunu to make it 3 0. And Bradley Dack turned in from close range. And here's Pritchard looking to add to the tally. Jack Clark wide on the left hand side, down to the byline. We'll lay it back to Pritchard onto his right foot, drives across low, cleared away. And a strong challenge there from Dan Ballard. Maybe two strong referee blows a whistle. It's a free kick for yeah. the visitors, Southampton. 4 0 Sunderland lead here. Uh, I think Alex Pritchard, you know, he tried to just whip that ball in with a lot of pace there. Didn't really get the height on it, but you could see the. Uh, how close these Sunderland defenders are to Shea Adams. He found himself in his own half. I would call it a clever foul, Mark. Southampton not really going anywhere. Sunderland just trying to calm the game down a little bit. Played at their pace if they possibly can. Elsewhere in the Premier League, live and exclusive on TalkSport 2. Sunderland 2, Everton 2 there. Strong challenge goes in. A lovely challenge as well from Jack Clark. Showing that he can get back as well as go forward. Birmingham have got a leveller at St Andrews. Uh, Stansfield scored again, 1-1 with Millwall. And uh, Bristol City have uh, come from behind at Swansea. Cullen put Swansea in front, but Sykes and Bell, two second half goals. Bristol City lead by two goals. So don't forget all the goals as they go in with Adrian Durham on Talksport from 2.30. Here on Talksport 2 from 2.30, we've got live exclusive commentary on national radio from the Premier League as Chelsea take on Nottingham Forest. Oli Klink with Ian Danton, the former Arsenal man, Perry Groves. Here comes Southampton forward again. Nice layoff from Adams. Finds Armstrong, who finds Fraser. Ball in. Pritchard is back defending, and he gets it away. Back to Fraser, who is, well, I was going to say he was onside, but he's not onside because the ball came off a Southampton player, and he was about three yards offside. Flag goes up, and it's a free kick for Sunderland. I'm just interested, I mean, Tony Mowbray, he's never really too irate in that technical area, but I just wonder whether he's trying to get a little bit of information onto his players just to take the sting out of the game, calm things down a little bit. They've got themselves in such a convincing position. And they've got to try and play the game at their pace because we know that Southampton are going to come with the quality and the pace that they've got. They've got goals in the side. And when they get those opportunities, if you, again, you know, I keep going back to it, if you switch off, if this side who were playing in the Premier League opportunities, they're going to take them. Another free kick for Southampton. Doesn't matter to Sunderland now if the game breaks up a little bit and it gets a little bit stop start. It really slows Southampton down to a desperate, desperate for at least one goal here to try and work their way back into it. Now the ball over on the far side. Cross comes in, cleared away, and here's Equin out. Inside his own half, finds Pritchard. They've got an overload of players here, Sunderland, if they can find one ball. Pritchard has it back. They had two on the left, they go uh, two on the right, they went to Clark on the left. He stumbles on the ball, but finds Pritchard again, and maybe just the momentum gone from the attack. It maybe needed to go to the right-hand side there. But Equus back on it again. He's encouraged to shoot from 40 yards. Instead, he'll play it to Barr, who's wide on the far side now. Looking to lay it back. And they've got it chance now to put the cross in Sunderland can they get a fifth goal they will whip the ball in and it's headed away by Bednarek and it'll be picked up at the back and Southampton go back to Bazunu who eventually clears it forward and that's handball there as uh, well, Shea Adams handled the ball on halfway line and then had a shot from the centre circle that went just wide the whistle had already gone but why is that not a yellow card I don't get it, Mark. You know, is it one rule one week and one rule the next? You know, we've been told at the beginning of the season from officials that they're going to be consistent. Mm -hmm. And we've just had another one there because Snook or Nines played a ball out. It's hit Shea Adams. He's now being given a yellow card because as we saw in the first half, uh, with a yellow card, I think it was Luke or Nine, wasn't it? It was kind of advancing away from the ball and the same thing's happening out of Shea Adams. But just before that, he took a shot from the halfway line when clearly the whistle's been blown. He's tried to score, 
and the referee's just waved it by David Kew. You've got to be consistent. You've got to do it in the first half, you have to do it in the second. Oh, and another free kick comes here. Trey Hume has gone down, and Southampton's frustration, you can feel it growing by the moment here. You really can. And the ball on the halfway line. And now here comes Sunderland again towards the edge of the area. Pritchard has it now. Pritchard left hand side of the penalty area. Lays it back to Jack Clark. 4 0 Sunderland lead. Looking for a fifth goal. Clark goes past one. Finds Pritchard. Pritchard though eventually out muscled. And Mara will bring the ball forward. But he's given it away to Equa. He was going to hit that. He feeds it in here to Semedo on his right foot. Back onto his left foot. Onto his right. Shoes deflected wide. Wow. Brilliant play again. <laughs> again, you're just looking at him. Maybe we're getting too greedy here. But Equa, it fell onto his left foot. Yes, it was a tight angle again. Similar position, edge of the 18 yard box. Get your laces through it. But he was clever. He played an Emir there, just at the edge of the box. Lovely feet. Got his shot away initially, but that little slight deflection just took it away from the Southampton goal. It's Luis Hamir Samedo, isn't it? Yeah. His full title. Luis Hamir on the team sheet. And he's in the penalty area now, looking to get on the end of this corner that's going to be fired in by Pritchard. Whip on it, and good header. Benrek falls on the volley, side-footed and cleared away. Fall to Clark, is he going to shoot? No, he'll square the ball to Neil. Neil's shot blocked. Well, they're not letting up here, Sunderland. At 4-0, you could forgive them for maybe putting the cue on the rack, Mickey, but they clearly want a fifth goal here. Well, I think it's just great to see Sunderland supporters will be in this stadium tonight, absolutely loving this. You know, sometimes you can get a side who get themselves in front and then sit back and just try and see the game out well they're certainly not doing that got too many offensive players out there who are enjoying themselves who want to get themselves on the score sheet and if I'm watching Southampton over the next coming weeks the teams that have got to play against the mark I'm saying get out this back four get out this defence because they're making silly mistakes they give you opportunities they're not keeping clean sheets and there's a chance to beat them Southampton are still trying to play it out from the back. They trail by four goals to nil. Here's Mara. Left, uh, right touch line. He has a coming together there with Sirkin. And then the ball poked out by Pritchard. And we've seen, you know, Pritchard has come on. As, uh, we are going to get another change here. And it's Joe Rebo who is coming on. And he's coming on for Seku Mara was booked in that first half. And... His afternoon is done, so Joe Rebo on, but just the point I was going to make, we've seen Pritchard come on, and we've seen him make a couple of good tackles as well, so it's not just all the fancy stuff, is it, that Tony Mowbray wants from him, he wants him to get stuck in and do his defending as well. And that's the stuff that, that managers absolutely love, because, um, you know, it's great, yeah, getting the goals and bringing all the plaudits, but you still need to work hard when you haven't got the ball. We do indeed, we'll uh, head down to Stamford Bridge in a moment, Southampton have just got a throw in level with the edge of the Sunderland penalty area four goals to nil the lead here for Sunderland what an afternoon it's been for Tony Mowbray's men can they find a cross here Southampton They're hassling with Bar Sunderland to win it back it's all very slow at the moment from Southampton here now is Downs left corner of the penalty area gets it away Walker Peters tries to go through picked up by Pritchard and Pritchard's on his bike he'll find Jack Clark Clark over halfway line the red and white shirts are trying to get him forward in support Clark has it cuts in off the left hand touch line now he's got a ball to the right hand side if he wants to play he does his bar he's going to be offside let's oh, head no. down to Stamford Bridge and our second live commentary of the afternoon is Chelsea against Nottingham Forest with the team news is Ian Danton Thanks Mark, Maurizio, Pochettino names an unchanged Chelsea starting 11 from that which began the game in the Premier League against Luton Town. Cole Palmer who arrived from Manchester City yesterday for big money, he is on the bench for the Blues. As for Nottingham Forest, well they bought a whole truckload of players yesterday, only one of them is available today, Nuno Tavares, and he's on the bench with the departure of Brendan Johnson. The only change Steve Cooper makes from the defeat at Manchester United is to bring in Aurel Mangala to stiffen up the midfield. Three o'clock kickoff at Stamford Bridge. Chelsea against Nottingham Forest is live on TalkSport 2. Cheers Dance. Looking forward to that. We'll have that one on the way home. Here Southampton have won themselves a corner. There's a little bit of hush falls around this ground. The stadium alight being rocked by four goals from Sunderland. Can Southampton get a consolation here? They're going to swing in the corner. The referee blows his whistle. Now he'll tell them to get on with it. Ryan Manning on the near side who's 
going to take the corner puts it into the six yard box good ball and it's headed wide that was a great chance there Shea Adams was involved uh, well that was a chance I think Shea Charles might have got the final touch on it either one of them Mickey should have hit the target yeah absolutely he's put some very good balls into the area Ryan Manning from the right hand side from corners I think on a couple of occasions Anthony Patterson in that Sunderland goal he's not really been commanding he's not come out and cleared his lines and again it was the same situation and you're right we've got another ch opportunity there haven't they just to stick the ball in the back of the net but if you're a centre half coming up and you get the first header on it you expect to hit the target you do indeed you're live on TalkSport 2 Mark Wilson with Mickey Gray here about 15, 16 minutes of the 90 remaining here 4-0 Sunderland lead Tony Mowbray gone for a sit down now his work may be done for the afternoon Russell Martin is on the edge of his technical area pointing trying to direct his team around look they're not going to get the win here that maybe would have taken them to the top of the table as Fraser just lays off the ball well, they got to bed last night Russell Martin I think thinking yeah we've had a pretty good window there can't wait for tomorrow We'll be going to bed tonight. Glad maybe he's got a bit of time to work with his new squad. International break next week, so no game for these two. But some big games coming up for Southampton. They take on Leicester at home. You'll hear that live and exclusive on TalkSport 2, 15th oh. of September. Ball played forward for Bart. It's just going to curl away from him. Bednarek was a lucky boy there. If that ball had gone straight then Barr would have been in from halfway and there's I don't think the scoring's done yet Mickey I think we will get a fifth goal here such an open game isn't it you don't know where the goal's going to come whether it's going to come for the home side to add to their advantage or Southampton who you know they certainly look a threat there's no question about that they've still got the quality out there to put the ball in the back of the net and they are creating chances but it's just got to be a little bit more clinical Walker Peters was the furthest forward here Shea Adams his touch was a poor one all the one back by Fraser Fraser's going to shoot and the roar will tell you that that was way over from the Newcastle Loney Ryan Fraser he want that one back again and it's behind for a goal kick he just touched on it Mark there Southampton's games that they've got coming up um, 15 Friday the 15th of September the next game is against Leicester City and then they've got Ipswich Town is the next game and then Middlesbrough after that so they've got some really tough ones coming up I think Russell Martin has got to go back to the drawing board. He's got to have a look at how he's side are defending. Because you can't just defend as a four. Your midfield have got to help you out a little bit more. I don't think they've done that today. I think they've, you know, the, the game's bypassed them a little bit too much. But also your defenders, your centre-halves and full-backs, making mistakes. Too many mistakes if you're going to win football games. 4-0 it is here. Remains 2-2 over on TalkSport Sheffield United 2 Everton 2 it's live and exclusive on TalkSport right now Adrian Durham with all the goals as they're going from 2.30 if you've got the app you can swipe between the goals as they go in and live commentary from Ian down to Perry Groves of Chelsea against Nottingham Forest as Sunderland hammer the ball forward and that is going to go out of play and it actually took a nick off a Southampton player and it's a Sunderland throwing midway inside the Southampton half 1-1 one, one Birmingham Millwall Swansea 1 Bristol City 2 elsewhere in the championship but here Sunderland 4 Southampton 0 just having a quick look at you know, scrolling through some of the stats of the game Mark and you know, people are mad into XG at the moment well Southampton's has gone up a little bit which is 0.62 at the moment but Sunderland stands at 1.17 but it's the shots on target 8 for Sunderland and 4 goals two for Southampton no goals they've had nine shots all together in the game they haven't really looked like scoring a goal let's be honest with you they had a couple of half chances in that first 45 minutes but I, I just don't know where that goal's going to come from well the best chances they've had have come from set pieces and have not hit the target yeah. Holgate with a free header bloomed it over we've just seen that chance for the uh, substitute there Shea Charles who headed wide Patterson really only had one save to make of any ilk so far as he knocks the ball long and downfield and Barr's going to give chase he's another one that's developing from last year where it was raw and didn't look a lot to it if you know what I mean but he looks a player this time he's still obviously got a lot to learn but he's going to thrive from playing football absolutely 
Well, I'm still finding their feet, you have to say. I mean, second season in the Championship. We know it's very difficult week in, week out. You normally play on Saturday, Tuesday. It's sometimes very difficult. You talk about the players who've left the club as well. Well, here's a chance now. Downs is closing in on goal. Oh, his pass went between Aribo and Smallbone. Aribo with a shot. That's blocked. And it's picked up again by the visitors here. They have it on this near side. Smallbone will work it back. He gets it away to Charles. And now the ball back to Charles near side it's just the popping off the pass is similar in the same you can have it there but if you come for any further forward we're going to close down and engage here's Walker Peters he tries to feed it through for Fraser ball intercepted and Abdullah Bar will head off down the right touch line maybe not quite as much juice in the legs as there was early on but there's a couple of great runs through the middle one of them is Jack Clark lovely crossfield ball Clark left hand side of the area puts in an early ball he get it back oh he's touch let him down the defender cleared it straight back to Clark but he was still running at full tilt and he couldn't take it in a soft touch there and it was one-on-one -on -one with Bazunu. Ah, oh, excellent play lovely crossfield ball from Pritchard there was an overload on the left hand side great play from Jack Clark tries to put a lovely cross into the box and when it fell back to him he just needed that that feather foot if you like he needed just cushion that ball bounced away from him chance gone gone away but searching for that second goal he is today he's been fantastic today he really has another break here and it's three on two momentarily Pritchard gets the ball to bar he looks up he's got Hamir in the middle can he find him cuts it back to Pritchard in the D looking to pick his spot and he hits it straight against the defender Sirkin will pick up the loose ball but that was a chance for Pritchard we've seen him hit the target from there many times before and Smallbone back defending stops the danger as Sirkin I think caught Smallbone there has gone down pretty innocuous challenge but it will be a free kick to Southampton suddenly by four goals to nil here at the Stadium of Light and we have now got ten minutes remaining we're about to see a raft of changes as uh, more changes for the home side here Ellis Taylor is about to come on I think Jack Clark getting a breather for the last few minutes here and we're also going to see I think it's the uh, youngster Chris Rigg coming on and he's going to replace Abdullah Bar. and we'll get Mickey's thoughts on Chris Rigg in a moment but he is the one that's coming on and there's going to be another change for the visitors as well and it, it's going to be Alcaraz that will come on who he will replace will confirm in a moment so Alcaraz will come on it is Smallbone who will go off so changes but talk to me about Chris Rigg Mickey he's a play you know a lot of and he's been linked with big moves away already yeah I think a lot of people know a lot of them so far I mean he's, he's played a little bit for Sunderland now he's 16 years old I think when he made his debut he had to go to school on the Monday after he played so um, he's a wonderful talent he's got great left foot he's got that low sense of gravity and you just heard the cheer that he got when he came onto the field here today I'm, I'm expecting big things and I just hope that he learns his trade in a Sunderland shirt Mark, because he's going to go on to bigger and better things there's no question of that but what an outstanding talent he is yeah well he's going to get 10 minutes or so here at the stadium of light to enhance that reputation as Southampton will play the ball across field they're trying to get Fraser in behind O'Neill well, nine got a header on it, but Fraser's kept it in far side. Lays it back here. Southampton have got plenty of black shirts in and around the edge of the area. Can they find a delivery here? Alcaraz on the ball. Lays it off to Charles. Rusomadi's side look to get a goal. Good challenge on the far side. Oh, wow. Rick's penal. I thought he got the ball there. Certainly looked that way from up here, didn't it? But David Coot straight away blew his whistle I think you can see the frustration because there's three or four Sunderland players surrounding the referee asking the question of was it a foul because they looked like they made contact I think it was Luke O'Neill who made the challenge but yeah this gives Southampton an opportunity from a yeah a difficult angle but same quality that they've got from set pieces it always seems to be coming from that left foot of Ryan Manny who's now playing as a centre half I have to say they kind of chopped and changed that back four around Russell Martin looking for the answers but it's just not working for them today seven to go here at the Stadium of Light Southampton with a free kick everybody back for Sunderland all going to be whipped in 
right footed hits the wall and it'll go behind for a corner for Southampton there's uh, about 10 minutes to go at Bramall Lane it's Sheffield United 2 and 2 you can hear the closing stages of that one live and exclusive on Talks Board in the Championship Birmingham 1 Millwall 1 Swansea 1 Bristol City 2 here are Southampton now looking to work the ball Walker Peters edge of the area lays it back to Fraser sends up the cross to Shea Adams far post and it's cleared away and it's going to go out on this near side for a throw and it came off a Sunderland man and it's a throw in to Southampton who they're pushing but Sunderland so far managing to hold them out pretty easily a crowd of 41,459 at the Stadium of Light today great turnout and I dare say that the vast majority of them will be highly delighted with what they've seen Mickey Gray I can include you in the 41,459 you too pretty pleased what you yeah, see from I think, your I, th team. I think you can involve me in that Mark as well but early kick off on a Saturday the sun's shining I think it's going to be a decent weekend and Sunderland this weekend I yeah. might stay up yeah well I'm sure there'll be someone willing to buy you a drink somewhere in Sunderland <laughs> <laughs> I am actually staying up I've got uh, my old coach at Sunderland uh, Bobby Saxton under the reign of Peter Reid he was you know he was absolutely fantastic for us it's his 80th birthday um tomorrow and we've uh, we've got a, a surprise for him tomorrow um i hope he's not listening to the radio <laughs> no, I, yeah. if he's got the talk spot up you've just you've just ruined it Mr. <laughs> sorry, Green. sorry bob if you've just heard me yeah but uh, i think we're all looking forward to his birthday party tomorrow yeah <laughs> so is he now ball at the back from southampton <laughs> Someone in the Saxon household just got choked on their tea. Yeah. <laughs> Listen to the game this afternoon. Uh, welcome along if you are. Sunderland 4, Southampton 0. That's as good a birthday present as he could have wished for. The ball with Southampton. Is there a late consolation here? Is there going to be a late winner over on Talksport? Massive game. Sheffield United against Everton. Well, they both take a point, but they both want three. Who's going to be brave enough to go and win it? We'll find out. We'll let you know if there are any more goals there here on TalkSport 2. Sunderland looking to clear their lines. Here's Equa. Two wonderful goals for him. As the ball played forward, it's going to be chased down by... In fact, it's ben Bennett that came on, isn't it? Not Taylor, my bad. It's Bennett that's come on. And he chases the ball down, but it's back with Southampton who will now look to clear the ball forward there was another off the feet off the ball collision there Manning went down but referee says nothing of it and we go on here inside the final four of the 90 not sure there'll be that much time added on just the injury to Ballard really that we had and the substitutions of course here now is a rebo wide on the Southampton right hand side cuts in he's closed down by Sirkin Sirkin knows he just sort of fouled him Sirkin's claiming that he was the one that was fouled and it's another set piece opportunity for Southampton to put the ball in the box well it's a little bit too late for them now isn't it I think we could say that Sunderland is certainly going to go on and win this game but uh, Southampton have certainly kept going they've looked to try and get themselves on the score sheet they've just done another strike but they seem to be coming from 25 yards out now because Sunderland de defended so well to, to top off the perfect day they need to keep this clean sheet well this will be seven points in nine for Sunderland they're all of a sudden uh, getting on a little bit of a run of form as Alcaraz is closed down by Equa ball play to a rebo trying to flick it round the corner Sirkin is there Sirkin does well Pritchard then skips away with the ball the break could be on here how adventurous does Sunderland want to be well they, they push bodies forward and then Pritchard's pass was a poor one wow. crunching tackle Equa and now Neil feeds it forward Samedo's onside there he is to make it five for Sunderland in on goal Bazunu saves it great save Bazunu but Luis Amir Samedo in on goal hits the target but can't find the back of the net oh, I mean look he's not going to get a better opportunity is he Samedo absolutely fantastic work initially from Pierre Equa winning that ball back gets played through by Pritchard lovely ball there was a question as was he on or was he offside he was onside but Samedo there 1v1 with the goalkeeper has to go down as a super save from Bazunu but he has to score there if you're a forward player your eyes are opening up there and you want to put that ball in the back of the net just to top off a brilliant day well Sunderland have put everyone forward here is Pritchard short corner works his way to the area oh and the ball cannons off him and in the end all those players that have made their way forward have got to trudge back but 4-0 maybe should have been 5 there big opportunity for the youngster but Sunderland 
will be happy whatever happens in the last couple of minutes plus added on time because this has been dominant from the opening minute when Jack Clark headed them in front Southampton well I've just had a look on the old uh, sat nav thing on your phone around about five and a half hours the oh. journey home that's without a stop as well <laughs> me. credit to those Saints fans that have made the trip Aribo does well to keep the ball in down the right hand side Akaraz then moves it now forward here's Shea Adams 30 yards out he's closing in on goal just dwelt on it Armstrong goes down edge of the area nothing doing says the referee and Patterson will come out and collect it he's in no rush to pick it up he's happy to waste as much time as he can Adams will make him pick it up it remains 4-0 yeah, going to be no rush now from Anthony Patterson in that Sunderland goal. He's just calming everybody down, just waving them out of the 18-yard box. You know, they, they put Shea Adams up front. Look, he's had a couple of little sniffs at goal. He, he seems to have been on the ground and waving his arms around more than he's, he's actually been involved in the game. I just wonder whether there's a little bit of frustration marking in him not getting that move that he was expecting to get yesterday in the transfer window, the final deadline day. We were hoping for it on, on TalkSport, whether something was going to happen. But look, he's here. He's now got to stay and play his best football at Southampton and push them up that championship table in a big push come the end of the season. Yeah. Well, fair play to him. He has scored three goals already this season. He's could have had his head turned like some other players have and refused to play. Didn't do that. And he's here today, albeit in a losing. Very worth bearing in mind. They were three 0 down when he got on the field. Here's Alcaraz to the byline. Wins a corner for Southampton. We're in now to the final couple of seconds. The fourth official emerges down below us. He's going to tell us that we've got five added on minutes. A minimum of five. We'll be going to Stamford Bridge. Live exclusive national radio commentary of Chelsea against Nottingham Forest to come on TalkSport 2. All the goals as they go in with Adrian Durham on TalkSport. Is there a late consolation? That's all it will be for Southampton. who have got a corner. They're going to swing the ball in towards the six yard box and it's headed past the far post it was Shea Charles again who got up he's unmarked but can't hit the target yeah, I mean he's got a fantastic leap on him Shea Charles hasn't he that's twice he's got himself into the 18 yard box six yard box and just needed to glance that one needed to get a little bit more on it again good delivery but again misses the target he's done okay actually since he came on he's playing in that right back position isn't he I said before you know, they're playing Bednarak and Ryan Manning now playing as a centre half and Walker Peters now playing as a left back. It, that that kind of tells its own story, Mark, doesn't it? They've chopped and changed the back four and it's still not worked for them. Conceded three in the first half, one in the second half. Could have been more, should have been more. Five extra added minutes onto this game and I think these Sunderland supporters are enjoying it. We can't actually see the away supporters to see how many's left. Well, I can I, still I, see a few of them. On, we can yeah. only see the very front row. They're still here. Credit to them. What a day it's been for them. They would have hoped for more as Pritchard now works its way into the area. Then it crosses it into the six-yard box. It was just behind, but the offside flag had gone up anyway. And it was the youngster, Chris Rigg, who was in the six-yard box, but he couldn't turn it in. It wouldn't have counted anyway. It's a free kick for Southampton. The goals then scored in the opening minute. Jack Clark with a lovely header. Pierre Equa from 25 yards out made it 2-0 inside 7 minutes and then probably the game changing moment Pierre Equa 30 yards out from goal seemingly nothing on whipped in a shot with his left foot found Bazunu wanting and that made it 3 and then it was 4 with Bradley Dax goal here now is Semedo lashes a shot wide look he's not had too many touches uh, Lewis Samir Semedo but he's won a bit in the air and he's quite happy to have a go at goal he's got confidence I mean coming onto the field when you've got such a command and lead obviously it breeds confidence in all the players that are taken to the field but he's got that swagger about him you know, he's got that physical presence there's no doubt about that you can see he's a tall man a tall young man should I say as well but he's got that little bit of confidence in front of goal should have scored let's be honest with you Mark with his first opportunity 1v1 with a goalkeeper but that one was a bit difficult but still taking the shots on Pritchard just over hit the pass there to Rig when maybe a, a straightforward pass might have been the better option he went for the volleyed first time pass and now the ball coming forward here down the near side Southampton with Charles looking to get Armstrong and Adams in on goal Equa picks up the pieces and he now gets it to Pritchard who moves it to Bennett on this near side Bennett 
all cleared away by Shea Charles two minutes of the minimum five to go Tony Mowbray hands in pockets never gets two up when they lose uh, sorry when they win never gets two down when they lose he's pretty level headed isn't he Tony Mowbray he's been there seen it and done it but this will be a performance that will have him purring inside because this has been top draw from Sunderland nice run Alcaraz he's brought down by Dan Neal that's a free kick edge of the centre circle we'll have to pick a man of the match at the end of this game uh, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've got a couple of candidates in mind, I have to say, but um, I just think it's been an overall solid performance. It's really difficult to pick individuals out when you played so well from back to front, but um, yeah, I think we all know, Mark, it's going to be a Sunderland player. Yeah, I think that is fair to say. As the uh, ball worked for by Southampton, they've lost possession again. Here now is Samedo giving chase. Bednarek across there and knocks it out for a throw-in is there one late goal they scored early in the first half and early in the second half they scored late in the first half can they score late in the second half I think Sunderland are happy enough there's no desperation to get the ball back in play neither should they be here we're we going to Stamford Bridge for Chelsea against Nottingham Forest after this one but what a thrilling 90 minutes it's been for Sunderland and their fans and Southampton have it now, final seconds of the game. Alcaraz, oh he's giving it away, might just be a late chance here. Bennett <laughs> skips away, oh another one, two, Nick Pirouette. <laughs> the showboating goes on, Sirkin back to Bennett. Well it's all the tricks of the fair, now he puts in the ball to the far post, and oh! it's down! Oh it's a goal! Chris Rigg heads it in! Sunderland do score! And it might be a new local hero that tucks it in! The teenager, Chris Rigg with a header, but take a bow, Jewis and Bennett! A turn, another turn, and a third turn, and he celebrates like he scored the goal! You won't get many better assists than that! A moment of history for Sunderland and Chris Rigg! They lead and they will win! 5-0 but what a goal to wrap things up young talent strutting it stubborn the stadium all right it's a great header but Mickey Gray that was sensational assist from Bennett Jewison Bennett I right, take a bow I mean how many skills do you want to do in one move he did three against top quality opponents it just shows the confidence it was absolutely fantastic he kept the ball at his feet had that little look up and he just looked to the far stick and he saw young Chris Rigg just waiting there unmarked just needed to get that header on target he heads it down does all the right things what a performance what a showing in front of over 41,000 supporters at the Stadium of Light this has been a brilliant day for Sunderland it really has that's outstanding well he scored on his debut Chris Rigg in the League Cup against Crewe but now he scores in the Football League the full-time whistle goes here.